Ebru, also known as marbling, originated in Turkey and parts of Central Asia. Ebru is an art technique that can be created by using water on ink. The ink is placed on top of the water and can then be moved and manipulated with a stick-like tool. Once completed, the composition has similar color patterns like a marble. This is why the name marbling became popular. The supplies that you will need will be a small foil pan or a plastic bag, shaving cream, a ruler, cardstock paper, and food coloring of your choice. All right, KQ, so um, now that I have my supplies ready, it's time to get started. Now, the first thing that you want to keep in mind is your paper size. This is just your average shot size sheet of paper, like eight and a half by 11. So um, if you have a foil pen, you want to make sure that it is able to fit your paper. If you have a smaller foil pen, like I have, I would recommend just folding your paper in half and cutting it or just tearing it in half. If you do not have a foil pan, I will recommend using a plastic bag for the next step. All right, so the first step that you're gonna do is you're going to take your foil pan or your plastic bag and you're going to spray, spray, spray. All right, so you don't need a whole lot, just enough to where if um, you dip your paper inside of this, it's not gonna be just foil pan that you're touching. You're actually gonna be touching shaving cream all the way across. So I'm gonna put that to the side. So KQs that have a plastic bag, this is how this is gonna work. All you're gonna do is lay your plastic bag flat on the table. You wanna make sure the actual bag portion, the edges and where the handles are, are completely flat and on the outer areas. You wanna make sure the inside of your plastic bag is flat as well. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing and I'm gonna spray that. And for those of you that are using the plastic bag, this is how that should look. Just a nice little square. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. Just enough to where it's covering up your plastic bag. All right, KQ. So the next step that you want to take, whether you have a plastic bag or your aluminum foil tray is, you want to take food coloring, whatever color that you would like to choose. And you don't want to get too crazy with it. You just want to put a few drops in there. I would say maybe six drops of each color, just depending on how big your drops are. All right, Kekis. So this is what you should have now. You're just gonna have your shaving cream and your um, 
I'm gonna set your whipped cream. You're gonna have your shaving cream and your food coloring. So now I'm going to grab my ruler, just a second. Well, actually, I have something even better. I have a plastic fork. So I'm actually gonna use a plastic fork instead of my ruler um, because it's just a lot easier to use with your hands and it's a lot less messier. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this plastic fork and I'm not gonna stir it around or do anything like this I'm going to gently kind of rake over the food coloring so that it starts to spread around on my tray I'm gonna gently do that because if you do it too much it's going to create an effect like you whipped the food coloring and your marbling isn't gonna come out correctly so you want to be nice and gentle with that you don't want to do too much with it that's perfect now once you have that done you want to take your sheet of paper no matter what the size is. Now you are going to gently press your cardstock paper inside of the foil pan. You want to dip it in so that the foil pan is actually swallowing the paper almost. You want to get it fit to where your shaving cream is starting to come out on the sides. If it does come out on the sides, that's totally okay. That just means that your paper is going to be completely covered. So once you do that, you want to gently, not rip it away, not pull it back like a band-aid. You just want to gently pull this paper back. Now, for those of you that are at home that have rulers, this is where that is going to come in. All right, KQs. So what you're gonna do with your ruler is you're gonna take it from the beginning of your paper and slide it all the way across so that it scrapes the shaving cream off of your paper. Now, I have a squeegee. I prefer to use a squeegee because it's less messier. However, when we have done this in class, um, it's a lot easier for your student hands to use a ruler. So it serves the same purpose, so no worries. If you don't have a squeegee, just use a ruler. So, I'm gonna press down like that, and this is exactly what you should be doing with your ruler. So I'm gonna press down like this. So if you are using a ruler, you will be pressing down like that. And the same way I'm just sliding this squeegee across, your ruler's gonna slide across. Now what you wanna do, once you have enough space at the end, I know a few of you saw my paper just bubble up under here. You wanna hold on to that paper so that when you are cleaning that um, shaving cream off, it's not sliding across your table. So just one swipe. And I'm just gonna put that in there with my leftover shaving cream. And I'm gonna do a second swipe just to make sure that I have it all off. So now KQs, you should have something along the lines of this. Now, for those of you that do not have a plastic tray or a foil tray, I'm gonna show you how that would work with your plastic bag. So what you're gonna do is you'll have your plastic bag just like you did with the foil tray. You'll just put a few drops inside of there. Switch my color and put a few drops inside. Now for those of you who do not have a plastic fork, for that last step that I did before I pressed my paper down, what you can do is also take your ruler and just kind of swirl it just a little bit. And it has the same effect that it would have if you were to use a plastic fork. Okay, I'm gonna sit this to the side. Now I'm gonna get my blank sheet of paper So now that I have my paper, I'm gonna place it down in this plastic bag and press it very gently the same way you would do with your aluminum tray. Now, because your paper is a little longer, you might have to pull the side of the plastic bag up and kind of move your shaving cream to the end so that you can cover your whole paper. And then all you're gonna do is pull that up. And when I say pull that up, I mean the paper that you're marbling. So, pull that up 
And if you have a, a plastic bag, it's definitely gonna be an easier cleanup as well. So I'm gonna take my squeegee, or if you have a ruler, use that. And I'm gonna do the same thing and just slide it across. And then put the extra in your plastic bag, grab this side, slide it across, and put the extra in your plastic bag. Now, KQs, for those of you that have plastic bags, once you're done with your marbling, all you have to do is ball it up, throw it in the trash. My KQs that have your trays, what you want to do is get soap and water, only a small drop of soap. You want to rinse this tray out. Then you want to take the soap, the small drop, and just kind of swish your hand around it a little bit and rinse it out one last time. If you rinse this out immediately after you're done, then it will not stain anything. If you do not rinse this out immediately after you're done, you will have trouble getting the colors out. Now, I know some of you remember I had all those crazy colors on my hand when we did this during the school year. So, KQs, no worries, it's food coloring. All you have to do is just get some soap, suds your hands up, count 20 seconds, rinse your hands off, and then you're all good to go. So, this is what you should have. Well, not exactly like this, but this is something similar that you may have if you have a larger sheet of paper. So, KQs, now that you are done with your marbling, I'm sure that you are thinking, hmm, okay, I have all this marbling, I have all this paper, what am I going to do with it? So, KQs, many people use marbling for postcards. Uh, many people use marbling for book covers. Uh, people also use marbling for decorations. So, for example, if you do several different color marblings, you can attach them together and make one big picture. I hope you all enjoyed this lesson, and I have a surprise for you at the end of the video.
Unfortunately, KQs, the file would be way too large if I were to post the entire painting. I'm going to split the painting up into the videos that you receive over the week so that you can see the progress. In the meantime, I have posted short examples of marble paintings that I have already completed. I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> 